And now, for your Mason Thomas. A 6'1 senior, number 15, Josh Niederhelman. A 6' senior, number 20, Josh Scott. A 6'1 senior, number 22, Andy Sutton. A 6'2 senior, number 30, Matt Tudor. And a 6'2 senior, number 33, John Nutley. And there you have it, folks. Tonight, starting out of for the visiting Kings Knights and the host, Mason Comets. Tonight's officials are Ted Badgerford and Joe Cole. Your PA announcer, as I said before, is Kenji Matsudo. And the national anthem was sung by Melissa Ehlers. I'm David Terry, along with Mike Roddy here, as we get set to tip it off here in our second high school basketball game of the week here on ICRC. Set to jump center will be Woods for Kings against Tudor for Mason. Tip's going to be won by the Comets. Tudor brings it across the timeline. Swings around here to the near side to Sutphin. Kings will start out in a man-to-man -man defense. Looking for someone to pass to from outside. Now cutting down the lane, drives, puts it up off the glass, in and out, no good. Ball spot four underneath. Kings manages to come down with it. Ripping down that rebound is Rob Mitchell as we head the other way with the Knights. Pulling up for the short jumper, no good. Off the front of the rim. Tudor comes down with a rebound quickly up the court to Nutley. Tudor tries to swing it around. His pass is tipped and deflected out of bounds by Nick Woods. But fans watch this, Dad. These te teams mirror each other quite a bit. Same offenses, hard, hard, man-to-man -man defense throughout the game. Still to, not to get our first bucket of the contest so far. We're nearing the seven-minute mark here this opening quarter for Mason High School. Tudor drives the right side, pulls up, lays it softly off the iron, but it's still no good. Rebound comes down to Burge. Swings it out to Radabush, who brings up the right side between the legs. Finds a man underneath, nice pass. Looked like Mikey might have been looking for the foul, a little bit of contact underneath. Too hard off the glass, no good. Underneath with a reverse, and we're gonna have a traveling call. That one comes against Josh Niederhelman. And Nick Woods had a great look at the other end, though. Nick's leading the team in scoring uh, and also rebounding the leader in the assist, too. Just a team leader all around. Mason goes into a zone first time. We'll see that tonight so far. Rodgers Bush brings it across the middle. Swings it back around to Radabush and pulls one up from three-point land. Bottom of the net for Radabush, and we have our first score of the game. Took us almost a minute. Well, it did over a minute and a half just for the first bucket here. A lot of good defense on both teams' parts so far here in this first quarter. Yeah, both coaches talked to me before the game. They both played great, outstanding defense. Both are a little worried about their offensive production so far in the season. Nutley with us in front of us. Shoots an air ball too hard to cross. 5-4, rebound. Tudor comes up short. Looks like we're going to have a foul underneath. On Tudor. That's what it's going to be. Tudor will be whistled for the first foul of tonight's game. So good look, though. Matt took the ball hard there to the basket. The ball's just not falling in. Hadn't fallen in. Mason's only shooting 31% for the year as a team shooting field goal percentage. Oh, it looked like an almost a clean strip. We'll see who the foul was called underneath. 3-0 once again, and all of a sudden, within 30 seconds, Tudor picks up his second foul. I'm sure Coach Greg Richards is going to have him get the early exit right now as we see Swanson check into the game for the Comets. Yeah, Matt's a, Matt's a sophomore. He's, playing, he's been pretty steady all year so far for the Comets. Get it to their main man, Radabush, who gives it up 
up top to McClung. They swing it back around to Rattlebush here on the right side. Looking for somebody to pass to. Little spin move. He's picked up nicely. Tries to get it underneath the basket. Swing it back around to the top. Three-point attempt by McClung is no good. Rebound by Burge underneath, and he got a shot blocked. And they're going to call a jump ball situation. Excellent defense. And a very good call by the officials, as we see right here. Yeah, Kings does a great job of pounding on the boards, and Matt Swanson comes in and, and gets a jump ball. Great hustle on both teams. They're hitting the boards hard. Neither team is very large. We're talking about 6'2", 6'3", biggest kids on the floor, but they play very hard. That's tradition of both schools. Virgil do the inbounding. Finds his man underneath, and that's Mitchell. 5 nothing is the score. Kings on top. Break the pressure underneath. We're going to have a foul called. And that's going to go against Burge, and that'll be his first team's first. Any active shooting, that'll send Niederhelm into the line. Yeah, that's a nice pass by Andy Suffin. Got the ball in the line. He's trying to get other kids involved. Mason on the hole start to get as many kids involved in offense as possible. Find some more points out there. They did a nice job uh, breaking the uh, pressure right there. Unfortunately, Niederhelman misses his first attempt. Short on his second attempt. Mitchell down with the rebound quickly. Radovich brings it across. Brings it back up top. Picks up the dribble. Dishes off to McClung. He's stuck. Manages to find the ball back over to Radovich. He tried, squeezes his way up the middle, hard off the glass, no good. Rebound comes down to Nutley. He weaves his way out of traffic, gets the ball back to Sutphin, he'll bring it across. Tries to give it back into Sutphin, a little in and out. Scott elects to pull it back, and they'll swing it around to the right side. Drives hard, shots up, looks like we're gonna have a push. And that foul is going to be whistled against Kevin McClung, his first team second. Yeah, John Nutley did it, had a nice first step on that. Got ahead of him, Kings just got it from behind. Just a push in the back. Officials might call it a little tight early, knowing the rivalry up here, and uh, keep everything under control early in the game. It's just bad blood every time these two schools get together. Yeah, he, I, they all said he tossed out the records here. But Mason just can't buy one. This, this has been the, uh, the problem for Coach Richards all year, the offensive side. Uh, they're only shooting right around 55 percent from the free throw line all year as a team uh, and 31 from the field that's that's not where the team needs to be and the second attempt by nutley is up and good see a little bit of pressure by mason the knights able to break that oh nice move by rattles which pulls up from 10 no good off the glass burge with the rebound still strong Heavy, heavy board done right there by Nick Woods. He'll bring it out to three-point land. And, oh, Nick Woods! His first three. Again, Nick's average 20 a game. He can do. He can pull it up. He can shoot it. He can take it inside and shoot from outside. Mason able to break the press coming up to court. That's Sutphin out top with it. He'll swing it over to Swanson, who brings it back over here to the near side. Shot no good, fought for, Mason comes down with it. Up off the glass, bucket is good, Swanson. That's a nice move by Josh Scott, hit the boards hard. From a guard position. Burge with the jump shot, he finds the bottom of the net. Almost a steal on the inbounds there by the Knights, still gonna be Mason's ball, but you notice every time like they make a basket, they immediately get in that full court pressure. Exactly right. They want to keep the pressure on Mason. And they might they want to make it a running game a little more than what Mason does. Coach O'Connell's got to be really happy with 10 points and three minutes. He was saying his offense was struggling a little bit. They're doing a fine job early in, in Mason's gym. Sut Routabush is going to get whistled for the foul. See, he was holding there. 
on the apparent pick play. Get the ball in bounds, try to swing it back around to the middle. Swanson. Over to Scott, who brings it across the timeline. Brings it over to Swanson. He's picked up his dribble off his leg, almost lost that one over and back. Peter Hellman to Nutley. Kings is doing a super very, job very, yeah. on defensive pressure right now. Great man-to-man -man pressure, picking the ball up really high. You know, they're not sagging back. They're coming all the way out, as you can see right here in front of us at the mid-court stripe. Pulls up a little off the front of the rim. Shot no good by Sutton. It's quickly Kings, as you said, wanted to run the ball up to, up to court. They swing it back up to the top. There's Woods again from He's the top. Oh! Third, another three-pointer. Give him six. And we've got a timeout by Mason. 247 remaining here in the first quarter. 13 to 3 is the score. You're watching the high school game of the week on ICRC. That's, that's going to be a full 60 second timeout by Mason. I'm sure Coach Greg Richards has got to settle him down. He's down 10 points here in the first quarter. And the way the pressure is going and the way they're playing defense, uh, he doesn't want to get this too far out of hand because uh, it's going to be a long night. Yeah, they've been in all their games all year, Dave. And the thing about it is they've been struggling. To, they've had some free throws. We're missing a couple free throws early. With confidence, they've had a couple nice drives. The ball's just not going to the hole early in the year for the Mason Comets. On the other hand, Kane's come to Mason's gym, uh, foreign territory. Uh, this is the first year gym. Absolutely the lights out so far. Nick Woods on a couple three-pointers. And Kings, uh, coach has got to be ecstatic where they're standing right now. Well, as you said, they're they're shooting really poorly from the floor, 31%. And their free throw percentage, as you said, was 55%. But they're only scoring 51 points a game also. However, they're keeping their opponents down to, to 50. So, uh... That's where they end up coming up with that four and four record. Exactly, it's unusual for the Comets usually keep, for a whole quarter uh, keep the opposing teams right around 12, 11 points. And Kings already has 13 points with 2.47 left to go in the first quarter. Well, they've only had, I mean, every game that, 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 that they've played so far this year has been relatively close one way or the other with the exception of the Wilmington game, which was, which was I believe, a 21 point uh, win for uh, the Comets as we see the shot go in and out. And Woods rips down that rebound out of one of the Mason Comet defenders' hands. Nick Woods wants to let everybody know he's the best player on the floor tonight. He's shown it so far. Ball pass tipped away. Very nicely done there by Matt Swanson for the Comets. The, the Knights will have it out underneath the baskets. Burge will do the inbounding. Offensive foul is a good yeah. call. Good Dranchek, Jason Dranchek has checked into the game and he's going to get whistled for a foul. A lot of times the officials don't see that, but you just can't do it right in front of the other official. Good call by the official. Both teams, you'll notice, folks, they get a lot of players in. The way they play, FABC, it's, it's, uh, they get tired easy. They play eight, nine players in both teams for tonight. Nice Sutphin, nice pass inside. Too hard off the glass, but his tip back is up and good by Niederhelman. As you said, excellent job right there on the pen dribble penetration by Sutphin. Just under two minutes here remaining in the first quarter. Driving to the hole, hard off the glass, rebound, fought for underneath. Comes down with it, we've got a whistle and a foul underneath. It's Dranchek's foul as he went up hard with that Here's a replay. Kings just can't buy one. They're just banging on the boards. They're out working Mason early in the game so far. Coach Patil is a defensive uh, coach for Mason, assistant coach. He's jumping on them a little bit about not boxing out. There's three opportunities right there that uh, there wasn't a whole lot of boxing out on Mason's side. And his first attempt is up and good is Jason Dranchik. That'll give him his first point on the night. You see Radebush check back into the ball game, and it looks like... Uh, Mitchell will come in, but he's probably going to go back in for Dranchek. As his second attempt is up and good, and with that, he'll take two points and head to the bench as Rob Mitchell, number 44, will check in for Kings. 15 to 5, a buck 46 remaining first quarter. Kings on top. Basically, it's man-to-man -man pressure, and they try to trap when they can. And we got a steal from behind. Rowdy Bush tipped it away. And he's got to have somebody talking to him on that one, letting him know that he's got a trailer coming up behind him. As Woods 
off balance shot underneath. Rebound comes down to Swanson. They quickly run the floor to the comments. Off the glass, foul's going to be called. And I believe that's going to go against Routabush. I think it might be a second. And you're correct. Routabush puts up his second, so they're going to go ahead and quickly insert Zach Woods back in the lineup and set Routabush down. I see he doesn't want to pick up that third foul this early in the ballgame. Exactly, but here's the call the coach has. A lot of coaches believe you don't want to get the third in the first half. We're still in the first quarter. He has two, so you know he's down for a while. The Kings can't afford to put, keep him on the bench uh, too long, I don't believe. Mason's struggling with the free throw line still. As Davis cannot get the first one to go down and rattled in and out. Second attempt gets the bottom of the net. It gives him his first point tonight. Cuts the lead down to nine. Woods has it high out top. Coach is calling one four for Nick Woods up top. He might be a clear out more or less. He'll drive left, dishes it off inside, block for behind, and we got a whistle on the play. Oh, Mike, I don't know. That looked like a clean block to me. Official had a bad idea. He thought he had it, but it looked, it looked like a clean block. I don't know if there was a replay of that or not. Official was in a bad area. Nick nice does a drive. great job of driving. Nice dish. And we'll see what happens. Matt Davis from behind. That's all ball. Woo. And the official was looking at it, so they're just maybe trying to keep it clean. He pretty much had that camera angle we just had. Yeah, it's uh, that, that wasn't a very good call, but uh, I think Mason's defense, is, they're more mad about giving the drive up to Nick Woods. Mitchell gets his first attempt. And his second as well is good. Give him four, 17 to six. Kings on top still. Still a lot of pressure. That three-point attempt is up as good by Sutton. Believe it or not, folks, Andy Sutton's shooting better from three-point land than he is from two points. He's averaging 39% behind the arc. That's his first that's his first bucket on the night as we have a whistle underneath and it's going to go against Kings looks like Burge. See this was things start getting excited the officials got caught there's some talking going on now and people get after each other this is Kings and Mason this is what you, you have to expect when they meet. And Burge believe it or not has picked up his second foul here and we're still in the first quarter as you've already mentioned. Davis breaks. Breaks the pressure, gets the ball out top to Sutton and starts the offense. Looked like he got a little contact, no foul called. They'll swing it around to the right side, back over here to the left. Behind the arc, shot is up, no good. Sutton rips down the rebound. Swing it around again. Peter Hellman. Over here to Sutton, right in front of us. Takes dribble to the right, passes off to the right. We're gonna swing it back around here. Three-point attempt is no good. Hard off the glass from Brandon Yost. Fought for underneath. Shot up, no good. Still fighting for it underneath. And we're going to have a foul, and it's going to go against, looks like, Niederhelmen. They are absolutely bodies going everywhere Yeah, there's a lot of contact. You've got to clean it up somehow. But, but I, again, a lot of the shots are going up. The kids are missing five and six footers. There's a lot of contact. Sooner or later, though, you expect the high school left for them to knock a few of those down. I think the only reason Niederhelmer picked up the foul, Mike, is when he came down, he was on top of one of the uh, Kings players, and there was nothing but, I mean, yeah, they were literally tackling each other. Exactly. They're doing a very good job, though, fishing in them. They're not calling a ticky tack foul, but yet they're keeping control of the ball game. As we see right there, good job by the Mason defense. Nothing at the end. And that'll do it right there. Kings unable to get a shot off as Mason attacks with a little bit of their own answer of the full court pressure. So after the first minutes, eight minutes of play here, 17 to nine to score, Kings on top. Got that eight point lead. Looks like our top score is gonna be Sutphin and believe it or not, that's only with that one shot, the three pointer that he drained. As uh, Nick Woods has two of his own, gives him six, top leading score for the Kings Knights right now. But pressure right now, it's, it's, it's what's keeping Kings in the ball game. Yeah, uh, Kings doing a fantastic job of hitting the boards. Uh, they're a little undersized out there, but they're using their quickness. Nick Woods hits a couple big threes to get him up early. I'd venture to know from Coach O'Connor, this might be the, the biggest quarter of the year so far, 17 points. Uh, they're only average right in the 50s too, low 50s at the most. And again, from the, the Mason side of the ball, they're not happy. They're getting a lot of good looks, but the ball's not going in. You gotta finish the play. You just can't shoot the ball. You gotta be able to finish and get the two points in there. 
And they got to be thinking that one of these games is going to be the breakout game where, where, where the five, six footers start dropping and all of a sudden we start seeing the uh, field goal percentage go up a little bit for them as, as a whole, right. as well as struggling from the line. I mean, I don't have the official stat here, but I, I do know that they've only made two free throws and I got a feeling they've shot five or six so far. Yeah, probably about two from six. That, that's probably the right call. So money comes on the floor. I don't think they're throwing it at us yet. I'll take that. I'm going to fly these afterwards. <laughs> the referees immediately take charge right here in this situation. Now uh, they have some stuff throwing down here. That's Ted Bagaford and Joe Cole taking charge of the situation, making sure that uh, the students and the fans here are in attendance tonight at Mason High School. You got your matchup zone is what Kings has got here. A little bit of different look here. Josh at a hoop, line drive shot, no good off the front of the rim is Swanson. Woods will bring it up for Knights. Might stop and pop, there it is. Pulls up, that's gonna be short. I don't know if that was blocked out front, but Brad McCordy comes up with the garbage rebound. <laughs> no pretty way to put that. And swinging around to the right side. A little bit of pressure over there, and it's going to be on the line. Turnover, Mason. Again, yeah, most of the teams that have been playing Mason are gone zone. They're, they're making them beat them from outside. And Kings, Kings is playing some tough man to man. They throw back in a matchup zone. They're doing a fine job of switching things up here. He'll take that one around the right side. Oh, swatted out of bounds. Let's see who gets control of that one. Kings will retain possession. It was an excellent move by Zach Woods. It took that right side baseline, but he had that stuff swatted back real quick. Josh Scott on the block, but does a good job of staying after it, knocking it off Andy Sutton. What Mason's doing is looking for a trap in the corner. They got it right there, and they got a turnover. Coaches are saying to move the ball from King. Mason did a good job. Andy can stop pop from here. Off balance, but nonetheless, he hit the, the two-pointer. Had his foot on the line. Yeah. Boy, you talk about improper shooting technique, but he did an excellent job. As Mason fighting hard for the ball underneath, and we're going to have a jump ball situation. Kings will retain possession. I, mean, I, I really think Nick, in his mind, thinks he can take Josh Niederhelm into the hole every time and try to create for his other uh, for his other teammates. And I, he decided to watch himself. So he's going to get out of control, play underneath control. He's a big, fine athlete, though, that Nick Woods is. Radabush checks back in for Kings. Keep in mind that he does have two personal fouls. Kings having a little problem getting the ball in. And they're going to call five-second right. violation. He tried to call the timeout, but couldn't get it in time. After you get to that four, they, they're not going to give it to you. After he gets the counts to four, and that's when he tried to count it. Good defense by the Mason Comets. Now, all of a sudden, we're just going to have token man-to-man -man pressure coming up the court. Oh, almost a travel. Scott shuffled the feet a little bit, but he managed to get rid of the basketball. Just swinging around to Sutton, who throws it over to Swanson. Back to Sutton in front of us to Scott. Stripped away from behind. Roudabush will take it to the hole. Out of control, his shot no good. And we're going to have another jump ball situation underneath the basket. Possession arrow points in favor of Mason. They were, they were kind of crumpled up back there again. The, the, the tempers get a little hot, hotter right now. Here it is. It looked like you had him in a little headlock there. A little WWF action. <laughs> Scott wasn't too happy with that. Can't say as I blame him myself. The big man can go ahead and bring it up and break the pressure. This is doing a good job. They're talking to the kids, telling them to keep their hands off. So you got to listen a little bit. They don't play to the kids. You have, you play to, you have to play the way the officials call the game. Got the th open three, but no good, and we're going to have over the back going to be whistled against Sutphin. That will be his first. Six thousand piece, middle second quarter. Both teams are playing hard. You got to give them credit. Teams aren't, aren't where they need to be record-wise, but both these teams will never give up, never quit. Still an eight-point difference. Just the same way as we started this quarter. Kings still on top, 19 to 11. 
Ryder Bush picks up his dribble. Now he's getting a little bit of trouble. Pressure steps up. He throws an errant pass. Mason unable to capitalize on that. Woods has it over in the corner. His pass is blocked. Sutton comes down with it. He's double teamed. Looked like it might have been over the back, but the pressure comes the other way as Woods will take it to the hole. Crossover dribble goes up to the left side. Wow. And we're going to have a traveling call. And the Mason crowd gets into it. Now watch it. I tell you what, I, I, we're sitting down here in the action. Here's a replay here, and Nick Woods will see the travel. That's not a travel. That's, that's not. That's a good solid move. Unless he saw something slip, but he caught it right away. That's a jump stop. Yeah. In my opinion, again, we're. I'm, I'm going to agree with you. <laughs> Looked like it was a hack, and we're going to the line to shoot two right there. He must call a slip or something like that. See what happens. A lot of these guys play in summer leagues again. They know each other. So we're talking a little bit, having fun. They're laughing out here. But man, they're, going, they're ready to beat each other over the head with the ball right now. <laughs> <laughs> Neither helmet and birds going at it uh, as well as they did here in the fall in the football season. The tempo is definitely picked up. Very exciting. Nice turnaround shot on the other side. Matt Tudor, a nice move, Matt. Came back in. He has two fouls. They took it strong to the hole. Mason's only down six. Drives the lane with the left hand. Gets caught in a little bit of traffic. We're going to have a foul. Josh Scott tried to draw the charge, and official says he wasn't set. Scott, that'll be his first foul. Team seventh. Josh plays hard. He's a good defender. He really is. He came over from Lakota School just a couple years ago. Well, we got a timeout going on right now with the Kings. Knights taking one full timeout. 19 to 13 is the score. They've managed Mike to squeeze this down to six points. And uh, this has definitely been a little bit different than the first two games. You know, the triple overtime game with the freshmen and then uh, the JV team unfortunately lost to Kings. But this game's been just as exciting. You know, full venue of uh, good basketball here tonight. It's good basketball. The thing about this, Mason's been every, every game has been in their games. They're four and four, but all their losses uh, have been with under, under 10 points, 10 points and under. So they're in every game because they play great defense. And I know Kings was disappointed early in the year. They lost, uh, I think, big one game. Uh, maybe another game for the coach at Lego. They're, they're playing hard, and, and you can see it out here. This is the type of game that brings out the best uh, if you're a basketball player. You want to play in these big games. You know each other. You get bragging rights until you play later on in the year at Kings. So, uh, and Mason's kind of had their numbers the last couple of years in basketball and football. I know Kings doesn't like that. They want to they want to pay them back a little bit tonight. Going to the line for Kings is going to be number 13, Kevin McClung. This is the bonus situation. He'll be shooting one and one. And rims off. Rebound comes down to, to Tudor. Quickly up the court. Nice Drives the left nice. side. And, uh, call. Stuck his leg out. He beat him around the corner. That was on number 44 in Kings. Mr. Mitchell. And that will be his first team seven. Real, real, real nice thing, I don't know if he had the Josh did a great job of keeping his dribble alive. Uh, dribble penetration, stutter step. He kept it alive and surprised Mitchell took it the hole. Now you get the freebies, and this is where you knock the lead down. When you're behind, you want to be at the free throw line. That means you're being aggressive, you're taking the ball to the hole. And his second attempt is good also. Four-point game right now. Nick Woods was down court. Teammates didn't see him. He was calling for the ball. Big-time players, you know, will always step up and ask for the ball in a crunch time situation. We got a partial block underneath, and Mason's going to come out with it. Niederhelman, oh, might have got away with one there. Looked like maybe a little bit of traveling, but no call. Shot no good. Woods will bring it down. You know he's going to be looking for a shot. He hasn't touched the ball in a while. He backs out, double teamed. Off the back of the rim, he's fighting for it. Radovich comes down with the loose Once ball. Oh, he's wide open. You don't want to give him that look too many times. Yeah, you don't want to give Nick the, but I think he's just got to settle down and, and make sure, take it when he's got it. I think it, more clear outs, he can take uh, most of the Mason players anytime he wants well, to. Well, she said, though, he was calling for the basketball. You almost had that sense that he hadn't touched it in the last four or five times down the court. As we see Josh the rebound Scott. underneath. And we're going to have a jump ball. 
And I, I've, I've seen more I've, jump balls in the first half <laughs> of this ball game than I have in, in five years of doing high school basketball. That's what I was gonna say. I mean, he, they don't wanna give each one the foul. They're both hustling and getting after it. Both teams are giving up a lot of offensive rebounds, though. The coaches gotta be talking about that at halftime, both of them. Bush throws that one away as he was looking down. It looked like he got a little bit out of control as he got down into the paint. Well, again, what, what they're trying to do is break him down in the middle. Robert Bush should take him off the dribble, dish or shoot. Uh, really, nobody was moving from Kings. He kind of surprised his own player with that pass. Just under three and a half minutes remaining here in the second quarter. Still a four-point difference. Kings on top. Mason score here. The, the momentum's definitely on their side right now. That nice oh, pass. Oh, nice look underneath as Niederhelmer takes it up hard. And he's going to be fouled. That looks like it's going to be against McClung. That's what Andy does well. He's uh, He's been having to score a lot. Here's a nice replay. Beautiful Josh has a great look. ball fake and goes up strong. And McClung did the right thing. Don't give him the easy bucket. Picks up his second foul, though. Yeah, he's got a foul underneath to make Josh hit the free throws. Especially, you know, obviously with only shooting 55%. Josh, well, Josh himself is only shooting 35%, so there's a better move. He misses the first one. But Andy's got to pass the ball to get more confidence in the ball. That was a nice pass by Andy. That's not a bad-looking shot. It's just a little hard. This is both attempts, and Nieder Hellman's kind of in trouble. He's going to call for a timeout and gets one. That's a good, smart play by a senior. Uh, he was a quarterback in football, right. a good all-around athlete. He knew he was dead in the water. Now with these new 20s you got this year, that's a great time to use one. So it is a 20-second timeout. We still have a 19 to 15 game. Kings on top. They've been on top the entire game so far. They jumped out to that early five to nothing lead. As it took us almost a minute, well, it actually was a minute and 30, 36 seconds before we had our first bucket scored here tonight. But it's been nothing but uh, nonstop end-to-end -end action all night long. What you got, Davey? Remember, though, the Kings had 17 points at the end of the first quarter. They got two with only three you minutes got that left. Right. So here's the effort flow of the struggling on the offensive side that both school, uh, coaches were talking about. They were down nine at the end of that first quarter. See the skip pass come across. Go back out top. Got an open look from three-point land. And, he, and Andy Sucked goes it. on streaks. You don't want to hit. Kings does not want him to get on streaks. On the other hand, Mason, wanted, he's a streaky shooter. When he feels it, he's going to keep on firing it. Sutphin has eight here in this opening half. Nice oh, pass. wide open underneath his birds. Too hard off the glass. And that's going to be Mason's basketball. I, I think he was so shocked that he was so wide open underneath the basket. And once again, looking for contact, and there was nobody there. Yeah, Just Zach too Woods, hard. Zach Woods had a great pass on that. Look, you got to knock those down. They're missing layups, both teams tonight. And that's why they're both shooting so poor for the year, <laughs> I guess. He'll pull up from the charity strike. He knocks that one down. Nutley, Nutley has three. John, John's been struggling a little bit. He's a good, very fine athlete. And that's a confidence builder for John. He needs that. See, Woods, you know, he wants to shoot. Fires that one up. I think they're going to call out Matt Tudor. That'll be his third. Coach Richard said, hey, you've been calling jump balls all night. Where's that one? And that's going to be against Tudor, yes. And you're right, number three. So quickly up off the bench is Matt Swanson. These are big. Uh, Kings has got to get some momentum back in their favor. Hit a couple from the charity stripe. Uh, and Nick Woods is being aggressive. He takes the ball to the hole very well. Again, he's a senior, 20 points a game, averaging eight rebounds a game also. His first attempt is up and good. Nick's been playing at the varsity level for Kings since the uh, late, uh, late freshman year he moved up. I know sophomore year he's actually even starting a little bit maybe for the varsity team of Kings. He's been a fine player for Kings over his career. Knocks both of them down. Gives him eight also. Got a lot of full court pressure going on right now. Mason able to break it. A nice job by Nutley to pull that one back out as he didn't have anything going on. Ball knocked out of bounds. Mason still retains possession. Having a little trouble getting this ball in. 
Ooh, and just underneath that five second. Coach Rich is not happy. Again, he, you're doing it now. You're, you're getting a wait to time out on that. And he's going to the 20. He was mad. John Nutt was out of bounds. And they, they said the play was not there. And everybody stopped going to the man. When, when you're dead with the ball, somebody's got to move to the ball, not, not away from the ball. All of a sudden, Mason's managed to fight their way back to only being one point down. We still have a minute 51 remaining. They've got a chance to, to take the lead here on this possession for the first time tonight. Yeah, you get people, like I said, you got the band here tonight. You got a lot of people from Kings and Mason here. I know this is the first time you've seen this uh, gymnasium. This is a great gymnasium. Nobody's been here yet this year. It's a great place to watch high school basketball. It's an excellent facility. If I only have one complaint, it's, it's a very difficult to hear you down here <laughs> courtside. A little bit of a left-hand finger roll, no good, and off the back of the rim for Josh Scott. Another three or four bitter miss, missed by both teams. Woods has it out top, picks up the dribble. He was double-teamed momentarily. They're in kind of like a double. They're swinging it. It almost looked like a box and one. I don't think it was there. Shot up, no Looks good. good rebound. rebound. Nutley comes down with it. They'll get it back. Andy Suffer with the ball, bringing it out. Good rebound by John Nutley. There's a reach. That's just a silly foul. You're right in front of the yeah, official. Going to be caught on Zach Woods. That'll be his first. I, I believe Zach's only a sophomore, so he's still learning a little bit. But, you know, late in the game, you're up one point. You're right in front of the official. You don't have to go for a swipe behind the back. Matt Davis back in the game for the Comets. Josh Scott out. Matt's a transfer in for Mason, a fine transfer. He played football, big part of the football playoff uh, team again this year. He's only a sophomore, fine basketball player. Mason Comets are glad he, he decided to come to Mason. Sutton gets the first one to fall. So now, with his second attempt, Mason takes the lead for the first time tonight, 22-21. Sutphin now has 10 points. Zach had a little trouble with the ball out top. Almost a turnover over and back. Ooh, a little delayed call. I, th I think he thought about it for a second. There's three lines out in the middle of the court. I think he kind of thought about it. Uh, which line? Is it on the black or green line? We're just off center court, but I don't think that ball actually went across. I, I don't. I didn't think it did either. Maybe his foot went across. And we weren't watching. I, no replay on that one. But great defensive pressure again. Turnovers. Like you said, the inexperience of of the younger Woods out there. Mason's moving again. This is great man-to-man. -man. If you like man-to-man -man defense, you come to the FABC up here and. These Kings and Mason people get after each other. Nutley's turnaround jumper is up and good. John's going down court saying and one. He thought he was fouled. And there's oh. a pass intercepted by He's out of bounds though. Swanson, but he must have stepped on the far out of bounds line. Yeah, he showed his athletic ability there. Matt's a very fine soccer player is what he is uh, in the fall. And he went out and got that ball. It just had to be out of bounds. Kings want something. Underneath the woods. They doubled down on him very nice. They try to get it back into Woods. Up. Yeah, there oh. it is. It was stuck in his body. I think if he would have got that out of his head, he probably would have got a foul call. I was going to call it traveling myself. And this looked like he just took there a hop step and no one really touched, but the ball did get caught between. Exactly that. right. It, it really should have been a jump. should have been a, a travel. But they call it three or four of those other jump ones. Why not continue the trend? See if Mason can get a shot off. <laughs> An excellent job, heads up play by the youngster. Creates the turnover right in front of us on Andy Sutphin and has enough presence of mind to call timeout with 4.8 seconds remaining. Yeah, that, that was great defensive pressure. And he looked right at the official call timeout. He had a streaking Kings player, but he didn't see them. But what a fine defensive player. The coach loved to see you get on the floor like that. And a real good no call right there. They were scrapping for a loose ball. Both of them just hustling after it. A uh, little bit of contact, but we're not going to call anything. And that's an excellent job. Yeah. I think, but you notice now in the last couple of minutes, everything's settled down a little bit. The emotion goes, goes strong in the first quarter usually. Everybody settles down a little bit. You don't see the banging and the hanging and the banging that you did the first quarter of this quarter. Shot is up, and it's going to be short. Knocked out of bounds. 0.3 seconds remaining, and somehow that remains King's ball. 
this this is the least amount of time on the clock, point three. Well, you almost got to just you have to tip. shovel this it's thing in. It's a tip. Nope. Couldn't even. We got a little bit of controversy as I'm not going to. I believe Brian O'Connell has a, has a legitimate grudge there. The ball has to be touched. It hit the floor. It didn't actually touch a player. He didn't even get a chance to put a hand on that. I think it barely touched when it, when it fell in. It's, it's got to be a tip anyhow. They wouldn't have got it, but still they don't. can't just said, hey, they can't have that trigger-happy guy on the clock. And uh, uh, Mason might have got a break, but Mason goes in with the momentum now. Being down, they only give up four points in the second quarter. Amazing. Uh, so Mason, did, Mason came back, I, think, I believe, it was about 15 on their own. So Mason has to feel more comfortable going into halftime. And now you make your adjustments, see where the coaches make their adjustments in the second half. We'll see. It'll be, definitely be a very exciting second half as we're going to go ahead and take a break here in the action. 24 to 21 is your halftime score. Mason is on top. Folks, we'll be back shortly after this. Javid Mashkuri. I joined the Peace Corps because it gave me um, an opportunity to do something worthwhile in a place that was much different than the place that I, I grew up and knew. And when I got to Mali, it was, blew me away. My job was to train local masons and well diggers to construct safe drinking water wells. The Peace Corps showed me uh, what happens when you don't have access to health care. We were providing clean water, which to everyone there is health. And we try to do the same thing here by just providing health care. Compassion, perspective, a sense of adventure. Each and every day, those three things uh, help me get through the day and make me a better doc. It's given me more self-confidence uh, in dealing with patients and other people, and also helps me through the most difficult times because I've already been through a lot of those. I'd recommend the Peace Corps to anyone that was thinking about any job. It'll help them excel and be better at whatever they do. And I think in Peace Corps you learn the value of service. You're going to want to be in the position to give service back. Peace Corps volunteers, changing the world, changing America. Welcome back to Mason High School, everyone. As we get set here to start the second half, Kings will win, bound the ball. Matt Burge at the trigger. Gets it into Kevin McClung. He'll bring it across the timeline. We'll let you know that the leading scorer, as we see the turnover underneath for Kings, was Nick Woods had eight points. And for Mason, um, Andy Sutphin uh, had ten. Yeah, the two seniors led, led their team for the first half. Kings comes down. Coach hates to have that. They had first possession coming down the first time. They get a turnover off the bat. Mason's got to be happy with their defense. Since the, the end of the first quarter, they've only given up four points. And, and, and one of the keys here in this second half is it, it, you kept mentioning it there the latter part of that second quarter was Nick Woods and not being patient and, and shooting uh, uh, good shots. He wasn't, he didn't, the last two or three times down the, the, the court, he didn't get good looks at the basket. Josh Cobb moving screen on that, trying to get Andy Suffin open and had a moving screen on that. And Nick's got to let the game come to him. But again, though, you know, he's a senior. He, the other kids haven't really stepped up except for Roger Bush this year. They've been struggling for an offense. They've got another two turnovers first two times down the court. So Mason's got to take advantage of this. They're up three if they go down and score. Once again, we see the full court pressure applied by Kings. No problems for Nutley as he brings it across. Had a cutting man is off his hands and out of bounds as Tudor was unable to handle the pass from Nutley. Had a good cut to the basket, just couldn't hold on. A little bit too crisp for him. Yeah, a little strong, strong pass or a good idea by John. Maybe a bounce pass might have been a better way to go on that. Good defense and these teams get after it. They get up in each other and they play hard. Woods with a nice look underneath. He dumps it down on the block, but they no goes. They kick it back out, swing it around. Rowder Bush looks like he's going to be caught. Had a chance of getting into the trap Another. there. Is that pass is going to go off Kevin McClung's hand out of bounds and Mason. So three trips down in court. And uh, good defense by the Comets. Kind of struggling here to begin the second half. Kings. But they, they're going to play their uh, tough defense, try to stay in the ball game that way. This game most likely is going to come down to free throws and who, who gets in foul trouble first. 
Oh, nice pass. Going to be taken away, though. He had a good look at it. He had a defender's back turn. It's Radebush a little bit out of control, but he manages to sink it. Nice move by Jason. He's he quick. Five on the night. So we see the full court pressure once again applied by Kings. Numbers the other way. Pulls up. Soft shot. Up and good. Andy Suckman. That was a running leaner by Andy. Good shot. Oh. Shot up and good. So all of a sudden, both teams starting to fire it up. One point lead for the Comets. Pressure still being applied. Kind of have spurt. Both teams, they, they seem like they go in spurs. Then I don't know if they're tired because they play so much defense and offense, but they, they kind of putter out at the end of the quarter. Neuter Helman tried to get a good look off the screen, but a good switch up on a defense. Might have been a travel there on Tudor. Nothing called as he tries. Neuter Helman takes it down hard off the glass. Looked like some contact. No, nothing called. We got an elbow flying inside. Now we've got a foul called finally. And that's going to be offensive against, I believe, Tudor. And that's going to be his fourth. He got in contact with an elbow. Here it is. Josh has kind of lost control. Look, matter of fact, the guy's across his arm, so I can't fault Josh for that. There's no call. And an elbow for the loose ball. And Nick just stood his ground, did a good job of taking the charge. Matt's got to pull up and hit the five-footer off the board. And as usual, when Tudor gets in trouble, Swanson comes into the rescue. Number 50 checks into the game for the Comets. I was going to say Josh threw a brick up off the board there, but he, he had something that draped across his arm, so you can't fault him for that. They double here, just follow the ball, basically, with their double. Good That's job, great hands defense. up, and they're going to be a five-second call as McClung unable to, to find someone to get that ball to. Right in front of us, good defensive pressure applied there by the Comets. And this is what Mason's done all year. They, they live and die by the defense, and they're doing a fine job coming out the second half. Just as in the first half, Kings comes way out high to, to apply their pressure. They are back in their man-to-man. -man. Oh, shot in and out, no good by Swanson. Good look, though, by Matt. Aggressive drive, pulled up from seven, just, the ball just didn't go in. Oh, it's happened? being double teamed. Having trouble to find someone to pass to. Manages to fight his way through the double team. Three-point shot is up, no good. All the red jerseys, no white jerseys, sure. easy bucket. Missed underneath, and we're going to have a foul. It's going to go the other way, and it looks like that's going to be McClung. And if that is, that'll be his third. Yeah. Mitchell for King. Uh, he, feel, he works hard. He plays hard. But he's missed four or five layups. I mean, uncontested layups. He's got to knock those down. Feel bad. He works hard, but high school level, you got to knock those down. You know, Mason's got to watch that. They went out there for that double team that time, Mike, and then. It, they got that ball reversed because Nick Woods was able to break through there. And he put the shot up at uh, Zach Woods, and it was nothing but red jerseys underneath for a rebound. Exactly. That's good ball movement. Josh should have picked it up there. Kept on turning the ball, reversed the ball. Ball movement. You go nice off the move. glass. Very nice move. Soft touch. Josh, Josh Scott. Scott. He's athletic. He's very athletic. Neater Hellman guarding Woods. See if they, they, see if they're going to try to double Nick somewhere. Woods will pull up in and out. Josh Scott playing well tonight. Oh, a little skip pass behind the referee there. Good job by Sutphin to pick that one up. Swanson will swing it up top to Neater Hellman who kicks it over to the left side, driving down the lane. Was Nutley, and he's going to be fouled on the floor. Yeah, Matt Burge got him on that one on the drive. They're called on the floor. Matter of fact, the official is. Get on legs, Jason. And they're going to call that. No, they're going to whistle that one on Routabush. And that'll be his third. Got me out of Matt. Matt was standing for the charge. And they're keeping him in with three fouls. Mason's still only up three. Kings is doing everything wrong this half. Trouble. Niederhelman gets the pass underneath. He went up strong. Oh, Tip Matt in. Swanson. Matt Swanson. <laughs> One handed. <laughs> That's Matt Swanson's first two points of the night. I believe the Comets' biggest lead of the night. Five points, 30 to 25 is the score. Mason on top right now as we just under 345 remaining in the third quarter shot up no good followed up very nicely by the young sophomore 
He has it stripped away. 5-4 underneath. Him on the floor. There's bodies everywhere. Good job. Good hustle all around. It's another one. We're going to be fighting. It looked like a looked like Rounder Bush had him in a takedown maneuver, but they yeah. didn't call the foul. They're letting him play. Again, when the ball's on the floor, when guys are piling on, even in basketball, I mean, how are you going to pick one out? So as long as they're consistent with that, I don't think either coach will mind that at all. Mason's ball anyhow, so good hustle by uh, Andy Suppin and Matt Davidson have been on the floor. Talking to Coach O'Connell here, the referee, and I think talking about the Kings fans behind the thing. I don't know if they're getting in the way or. Well, we had that incident earlier when someone threw some money onto the court. Maybe there was uh, something to that effect. Oh, there's got to be a foul right Oh, no, he's calling it out of bounds first. Coach Rich said he knocked him out of bounds. Difficult angle for us here. It was definitely contact, but he must have said that he stepped out of bounds prior to the contact. So turnover and Kings will have it. Definitely a physical hard fight. <laughs> You'd almost think we were uh, having the uh, second game of the football season tonight. They get it. They get after each other. I said it's bragging rights. People, people underestimate high school kids. They like to be bragging over the summer and of the year. Especially being backdoor neighbors as these two schools are. Look at that. That's a double triple team on Nick Woods. Somebody's got. He's got to give that up. And look, somebody's got to be open. There's a nice pass. Good cut to the hoop. Target. Unable to do anything with it as they almost throw it away. Zach Woods able to pick it up. A little sloppy for Kings this half. Again, they point hard. You keep playing this hard, something good is going to come. Woods will turn around. He fires that one up off balance. Rebound Mr. underneath. Mitchell. Mr. Shot's Mitchell. Gonna go. He's been there all night. He's a leading rebounder. Second leading rebounder. Watch this. No box out by Mason. You can see that. Kings players are inside a Mason player. That's their advantage. He goes right back up and knocks it down. Chance for a three-point play. That's the film that uh, Coach Richard then will get upset because there was no there was no box out on anybody there. Mitchell has six points. I think Andy Suffin's got some blood on. Yeah, they're gonna make him come out of the ball game real quick and uh, Get that taken care of. He's got some blood on his uniform, and that's that's just the rule. Yeah, automatic. I don't know if he's they're showing his elbow. Must his elbow have something? Yeah, it might look like he got a little court burn there. So that trainer's going to take him off to uh, attend to him down at the end of the bench, and he's going to have to go to New Jersey on too. So that ought to be fun trying to call his name his number out again. I've been, been calling him 22 all night. With that blood rule, I'm surprised that schools don't even carry two jerseys each for every player, and they might. Who knows? Nice free throw. Oh. Mitchell made the free throw, and then the Mason had problems bringing the ball back up court. Kings retains possession. They're only down by a bucket. Ooh, almost a shuffle of the feet there. Radabush pulls it inside. Good look inside, but the pass. I like the move by Jason, but again, instead of throwing across the way, he bounces that ball down and skips up to his player, most likely. And yeah. he's coming back in, number 22. And he's not out too often. He's trying to run on the floor before he checks in. Two point game. Tough and right away gets a touch on the ball. Going to be Let's stolen underneath by Radabush. Nice move. Because now we're all tied up at 30. One in the baseline, Swanson, and we're going to have a foul. Hey. I believe that's going to be whistled on something, isn't it? Yes. We pushed him. And now it's going to be his second. They're questioning Andy Suffin. He's got blood on the jersey, whether it's dry or not. They got to make sure the cut's cleaned up. I think they're going to make him take the jersey, actual jersey off. Yeah. Check that. I had Suffin down with two, make that three fouls for him, as they're going to have to make him change jerseys. Good defense. Kings gets a couple turnovers off. He's going to be number 44 now. 
Check that in the booth. Andy Sutphin has now been changed to number 44. Kansas stepped up the defensive pressure a little more now, and they've, they've answered the challenge. They were down five now. It's a uh, tie ball game. Able to get the ball inbound. Heavy pressure being applied by the Comet defense. Now all of a sudden you see the, the defense extend for, for Mason. They're picking everybody up really high on the court. And that's going to be offensive. Charge, excellent defensive job underneath there by Matt Davis. There's a nice drive. Nice speed. He beats him off the dribble. Matt Davis, great help side defense, takes a charge. Easy call by the official. Grancic will check out of the game with his second personal foul. See, Brandon Yost hasn't seen a lot of action in the game right now for the Comets. Yeah, he usually gets a couple minutes in the first half, a couple minutes in the second half. A lot of substitutions by both teams. Swing it back around, and Yost has it. Drives to the right, picks it up. Having trouble to find someone to pass to, and I thought that was a kick. And somehow they're going to manage to call that King's Ways. They said, yeah. And, and I thought it was a kick, too. I'm going to agree with, with Coach Richards on that one. What they're saying, what they're saying, if you're throwing it at the leg, the ball's intentionally thrown down your leg, and you're not intentionally doing it, they won't give it to him. Nice, nice drive. drive. Very nice job. Block. We're gonna blocking foul underneath. The Sutman took it hard to the glass. Yeah, I think he's gonna sign. The difference in this one, he's underneath the basket, and when he took off in the foul line, you have to be set when the offensive player takes off. We'll see if he's set here or not. Good drive by Andy, and he's still sliding underneath when he took off. Close call, but. Again, the officials, if he would take that out a little bit, even if the movie, he probably would have gave it to him. But you're sitting underneath the basket, they don't give it to him as easy. Nice drive by Andy. He really doesn't take the ball to the hole enough, in my estimation. I think he gets some easier points that way. And he gets his first one. Gives Mason a one point lead. Yeah, he's the leader, though. He's a, just a pure shooter. As well, the second one. He has 14 on the night, the leading scorer in the game, period. Woods double team. Burge has it almost to shuffling of the feet. Matt's got, got to look at the basket, though. Everybody backed away, and he was wide open. McClung pulls up hard off the far side of the glass. Not a good shot off balance as Davis comes down with the rebound. He's going to be triple team. Somebody's got to be open. Swanson will take it to the rack off the glass and good. Matt Swanson has four points, and quickly Mason's up all of a sudden four points with under a minute remaining here in the third quarter. Matt gives another athletic person out, and, out on the floor. Woods working very hard without the basketball, trying to get open. You know he's going to be thinking about a shot right here. His team definitely needs him right now in this crunch time situation. Take it. Takes it to the right side. going to be a block. No shot on the floor. Looks like probably Niederhelm is going to get whistled for that one. That was a call, but what do you have with such a dominant offensive player? That you can't stand around and watch him. Really. He's going to beat his man. You have to get to the open area where he can feed the ball. He'll, he'll give you the ball if you get to the open area. A little trouble for Burge to get the ball in. He manages to. That's Radebush getting picked from back. He'll swing it over to Burge from the right elbow. Burge has his second bucket, give him four. That was a good shot by Matt. 15 seconds and counting here. Swanson will take it straight to the glass. Aaron Pitts thought, looked like he thought Davis was going to keep cutting to the hole, and Davis pulled up short. A little bit of miscommunication. So now, Kings with a chance to have the last shot here in this third quarter. Burge on the inbounds. It's it to McClung. He'll dribble with the left hand. He has a little bit of problems. Takes it off the glass short. Five seconds. Going to have a foul. I believe that's going to be against McClung. Yep. He did a good, pretty good job of driving. I got a little frustrated. I think a little out of control, so he gets a defensive foul. Three or four on him. So McClung, yes, you're right. McClung has four. Three Burge has three as Radebush has three. 3.7 seconds left to go in the quarter to see what Mason comes up with. Trying to get the ball in or trying to score. Not going to score this way. Kind of conservative, but that's all right. It will take it to the fourth quarter with a two point lead. So Yost shot there at the buzzer falls well short of its mark. 
at this break. We have a 34-32 two-point difference. Mason on top, take a quick second to let everybody know that you're watching this game here on the ICRC. The replay times for this Kings at Mason Boys Varsity Basketball game replay times are as follows Friday the 9th at 11.30 p.m. on Channel 4, Saturday the 10th, 2 o'clock on Channel 4, Sunday the 11th, 6.30 p.m. on Channel 24, and as you see, we're running out on the 14th. That's a Wednesday at 7 p.m. on Channel 24. And keep an eye out for us for the next couple of weeks as we bring you some more exciting high school boys basketball action from around the tri-state. Next week, we travel to Marymount as Taylor goes in there, taking on the Warriors on their home ground. And then the following week, Wenton Woods will travel out to Harrison to take on the Wildcats. Yeah, yeah, those, are, those are some good games. People should stay tuned. Those are some good high school basketball action. So keep that in mind. And the replay times are generally the same on the consecutive weeks. They, Mike, if there's anything that, that I saw in that third quarter that I, that I should say, as far as a basketball perspective, that I needed to see, was, was someone setting some screens and some picks for Nick Woods to run off, as you were talking about. He really didn't have a clean shot or, or, or a clear look at the basket at all in that third quarter. I believe he like, took two shots, and both of those were forced efforts. Yeah, Josh Niederhelmer's done a fine job defensively on Nick. I agree. I think just pick and roll, get him at the top of the circle with some picks, and see what can happen. I mean, I'm mean, telling you what, if you, if you just isolate on him for a second, the kid is working real hard. Like all good players do, they work without the basketball. We got a walking call here. As they say, definitely Mason has picked up the tempo on the defensive end here in the second half, and that attributes a lot to the reason why Woods is having such a hard time at getting a clean look at the bucket. Mason only gives up about 50 a game. Shot, no good. Tip up by Swanson, no good. And it looks like we're going to have an over the back call. John Nutley, number 33. Like I said before, a lot of these games, these games every year, Mason Kings come down to last second shots or really come down to free throw shooting. And Mason, we, we, we said it earlier, is not the best free throw shooting team in the city. Well, against Lakota in their first game, it was only a. Uh, an eight-point margin, of course, and they had the blowout versus Wilmington. A four-point margin versus Norwood, a three-point one against Little Miami, a 10-one against Lebanon, 11 against Harrison. I mean, so they're all, they're all relatively close games. Right. Nick, Nick Woods did a good job of staying, staying composed, took the ball to the hole, and got a foul. There's nice, goes baseline, takes it up strong. They got a foul. I believe on John Nutley, if nothing else, because we're taking a swipe at it. Sometimes they call it for the swipe instead of going straight up. Nick's got to get, Nick's got to stay, can't get frustrated. Got to keep on taking the good shots, taking it to the hole. As Nutley quickly picked up two fouls there within that, that first minute of play here in, in the fourth quarter. Wood's second attempt is good. Believe it or not, that's his first point, as we said, here in this second half. Sutphin across the timeline, picks up his dribble. Crowd the ball, crowd the Swings ball. it over to Josh Scott. Looks nice underneath, pass. nice cut to the basket, good pass. Sutphin scores a nice bucket right there for Mason. Good pass by Josh Scott, that's what coaches love to see. Woods will drive to the hoop, off balance, somehow he got that to fall. Will that in. His first two-point bucket of the night. Double team in the corner. Oh, looked like that might have been an over the back. Mason somehow comes down with it. Sutphin up top. Nutley off the off the glass. Swanson trying to tip that one from too far. Yeah. You got to rip that one down. You got to go down with two hands on that one. I agree totally. I'll tell you what, there's action up and down, up and down. Guys on the floor. I've never seen so many players on the floor in my life. Oh, nice pass. Birds. Good pass, and he gets it to fall. Burgess got it. six points all here in the second half. Hustled by Woods, tipped away from behind. Radabush puts it off the glass. It's tipped, but it still finds its way down the hole. And all of a sudden, a Kings is converting a little five more point swing minutes. the other way. Suffin splits the double team. He drops that one down. 
Looks like Woods for Kings is running out of, out of gas. They're going to be a timeout. Call You're exactly timeout. right. He's bending over there on the side. He's dead. He, the coach just came across and said they're dead. They have to call a timeout. They scored that one bucket. He ran from one end of the court to the other to tip that ball away. And then they turned around and came down. And Radovich laid one in off the glass. And all of a sudden, it's a three points difference. Kings on top. It looks like everybody's sucking wind right now. Yeah, you got. Uh, you just saw uh, Coach Richards talk to Matt Swanson. I think about taking, take, taking on the uh, take the ball up. They doing some turnovers. They had control of three on two. No sense of turning the ball over. As the official comes over and talks to us during the thing, wants to know if we want to switch spot. I'll say no, thank you. We're safer here, I think. <laughs> you got that right. For the most part, though, they've done an excellent job. There was a couple questionable calls early in the game, but. Uh, but both these gentlemen have done a fine job throughout this contest. They've kept everything under, you know, un under lock and key, so to speak. You know, kept the rough housing down. They, they laid down the law. So uh, a very good, very hard fought, aggressive game. And, uh, and, and, and you, you have, like you said, you have to expect that, especially you. You, mean, you live in, in bleed green. Yeah, but, but as a coach, you love it. I like the way they talk to the coach and tell them what's going on. They talk to the players. They smooth play hard, and, and they're telling what's going on. They're letting the kids decide the game. That's what's that's what all coaches want, let the kids decide. Burge taking it out right in front of us. He gets it into Zach Woods, who finds a crease. Then he's quickly double teamed, swings it back out top to Radabush. Open. Oh, had a pass inside, knocked away. Mason on the break. Matt Tudor Pulls back up. in the game. Oh, had his shot swatted away. Big block there by Nick Fay. Woods did a great job of throwing off Josh Niederhelm, but I think he was out of bounds first. But again, the hustle. Matt Tudor comes back in that nice move, and I didn't see who was for King. Somebody put, almost uh, put it in the first row. Nick Fay, limited action tonight. I think it's his only his uh, second check-in of all night. They get a couple minutes there. He, says he quickly comes right back out. He said, you did your job. He's talking. He's a big old smile on his face. You'd like to see that. <laughs> and he's getting the big high fives from his teammates, saying, excellent job. Good defense. Pull up. Josh Scott. Shot good. Josh Scott. Scott. He's playing big tonight. Defensively, he's got some nice rebounds. He's taking the ball to the hole and hitting those seven footers. Had a real strong first half. He's only averaging eight, and I'm sure he's at his eight right now, if not higher. Give me a second here, and I'll run it down. He's got eight right on the nose. Yep. Six from the field, two from the line. He's playing well. This is where you got to take care of the ball here a little bit. Uh, you want to still be aggressive, but take care of You're only down one. You're king, and Mason's up one. You want to force them to do something that they don't want to do. They got a double team on Nick again. He managed to just turn around. Oh, they're going to call a foul. Looked like he shuffled some feet in there. And he said, hey, I got pounded earlier. And they're in the one and one. It's going to be against Davis. And I believe that'll be his second. Yes. As you said, they're in the bonus. Nick was trying to find somebody there. That's where you want somebody cutting down the lane. I think they get some easy layups on that. Somebody comes breaking down the lane. Nick will get him the ball. I just want to know if, if the rest he got was enough for him to go. It was only out for about two minutes. As you see late in the game, though, at, at the foul line, it's all legs is what they tell you. He had a nice form, good, good extension, and good release on that one. Once again, Kings goes up one, 41-40 is the score. Something has it out top, he'll swing it around. We'll go back to the man-to-man -man. now, they try to double. Oh, try to go underneath, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna have a hold or a push, and that's gonna be on the other Woods, Zach Woods, number 42. Good cut to the hoop right there, and, and Woods just got beat to the spot and, and uh, had, to, had to do something. That's a tough matchup for the younger Woods because if the Andy's got him by about three or four inches, I think he was basically on a switch is what they had that. And he's playing very good for, for a sophomore. He's a strong player. Big kid. Swing it back around to Nieder now. Throws it over on the left side. Going to be short. Didn't follow the shot nutley, but he's hustling after the rebound. He manages to get it, but it hit the line. Going to be off of him. It'll be King's ball. Well, you'd think every possession was the last possession, the way the crowd is ebbing and flowing from one, one extreme to the other. We still have better than four minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it's great action going on both sides. 
advanced sportsman's great for both schools. Nobody's sti nobody sitting, excuse me. He's feeling the one. Nope. In the student section. That was a good look by Nick, though. He got his feet set, had an open look, and he got to bust that. Oh, nice that was a nice pick Andy. and a roll. Oh, and Interhelm can't get a tip up. No good. Zach Woods comes down with a rebound. Radebush wants to run with it. He's going to take it over to the right side. Spin move, stripped to the basketball. Tie up underneath. We're going to have a jump ball situation. Possession arrow favors Mason. Maybe I was mistaken. I thought Mason got the last one. Here's a replay. Spin move. Again, you spin, you, you, you went right into traffic. Sure Good did. hands by Andy Sutman. Ball gets on the floor. I'm just checking the scoreboard. Now, the possession arrow says. It says Mason. You're right. It says home. That's Mason. Last time I checked. <laughs> Uh-oh. They get it inbounds. See what Andy does. Break, break the pressure. Oh, and he loses the handle, but it was tipped away from behind. So they'll still retain possession underneath their own basket. Andy's got to put that ball in front a little more. The uh, guard from behind should be able to reach behind him. Yeah, one more drill when I think he was going to go ahead and shovel that one off to Niederhelm, and it was standing off to the left side of the hoop. And the inbounds pass is going to be, looks off the foot. They'll still have it. It's something that's going to be the trigger man once again. Next, next foul on Kings will put Mason at the free throw line one one two. Nice play, Josh. And Nutley. Good soft touch as he goes up strong with the right hand. Nice play. Give him seven. Radebush brings it across, gives it up to McClung. He'll bring it out to the top of the key. Swings it back over to the right side to Radebush. What they try to do is force some baseline. Josh Scott keep him there. He got weak side help. He'll dribble back it out to the top. Swings it over here to Nick Woods, right in front of us on the left wing. We got plenty of help. We got plenty of help. And the double team always got a man open underneath. He finds McClung. Turn around, jumper is good. That's it. Nick, Nick good Woods won't there. find the open man. That was a great pass by Nick. Kid sees the court very well. You can see that. He's made some very nice passes tonight. Nutley with the basketball on the right wing. He's going to try to dribble in. Oh, a lot of contact, nothing called. Another contact. They're going to get him on the second one. They didn't get him on the first one. I think they're going to get him on the second one. Oh, it looked like it. Nutley ran into a brick wall there. That puts him to one and one. That's going to be called against Rob Mitchell, his second foul. That puts him, as you said, into the bonus situation. That's amazing, Rob. I'm not saying he fouls a lot, but he's in a lot of the action to hang in the bank, and he only has two fouls. He does a good job to keep himself out of foul trouble. Oh, first one in and out, no good. And it looks like it's going to be Mason's ball. They were fighting for it. It looked like um, it was Woods along with Rob Mitchell fighting for the loose ball underneath, and uh, they knocked it out. Comments. So we talked earlier. Mason is only shooting about 55 percent from the free throw. Such for the, do the inbounding. Oh, off the hand. Looked like Tudor had it momentarily and lost it. And again, another jump ball. And I'll tell you what, it's got to be a high school record for jump balls in one game. Possession arrow favors Kings this time. Players give it up. Players, both teams are just absolutely giving it up. Make sure everything's okay. Make the, it's not slippery on the floor out there. You got to love it. They'll double team Nick. They don't want Nick to have the ball. Middle, middle. That's what they're doing. Better watch the 10 seconds. Radebush comes job. up to help him out. Excellent job. He went to the basketball. They'll double in the corner. Double in the Got corner. Got get it. Ooh. From behind. That's a. Looks like that's going to be against Tudor. No, I think they're calling it on Josh from behind. That's what uh, the official was blocked. Yeah, they're yes. calling Josh Niederhelm from behind. Here it is in the corner. This is a perfect trap. This is where they want it. And the official's there. And he's Oh, yeah, gave him yeah, a little chest to chest, or yeah. chest to back there. Bumping a little bit. So that'll send Radovich to the line. First attempt, no good in the bonus situation. Mitchell and keeps he it alive. With his own rebound, goes jump up ball. strong. Here it is. Jump ball. Coming we'll back to Mason. That was a nice drive. I'll tell you what, that was a nice drive. I think that was probably a jump ball. Unbelievable. Watch his play. Mitchell tips it out. What a great job on the board to watch this, Radovich. This is a good move. Takes it right to the hole. You think he thinks he has an opening and when well, he did get blocked off Scott, the Scott, yeah. Josh Scott. That's an athletic move. 
You know what? But for the first, for as many of these as we've had, the coaches aren't really getting that upset. No. That's one of those things that being consistent with the referee, I mean, they're, they're calling close. They're calling it uh, the same way both teams. That's all you can ask. It'll be double, double teamed. They swing it back around. Somebody's open. They get their head up down the court. Sutphin brings it across the mid-court stripe. You don't want to give Andy an open three. He can shoot the ball. You don't want to give him an open three. Sutphin being guarded by Radebush. Swing it over to the right side. They're going to swing it back out to Sutphin. Kicks it over to Scott up top. He's guarded by McClug. He looked like McClug took an elbow in the eye. He's kind of hurting. Well, they got a double, double team now. over here in the, in the Coffin corner. Tries to get it through. Fought for Look the ball. This. Loose ball. Unbelievable. Radebush picks it up. Now he's double teamed deep. Birch comes back to help him. He's across the timeline. He'll get over to McClug. And he's going to call a timeout. That's Boy, a he's call. a little off of red in the face. He did take an elbow right there. Yeah, my pick. You got bodies flying. Yeah. I've never seen so much skin on the floor in my life. Good physical game. There we have 140, or excuse me, 136 remaining in the fourth quarter. 43-42. Kings on top. And I'll tell you what, both teams are in the bonus situation right now. The way this thing started out, I didn't think Mason was gonna be able to hang with them. They, they ended out as high as 11 points. They managed to keep wheedling it back. Took the lead here in, in the second half in the third quarter, went up uh, about as much as five themselves, 45 to 40. And all of a sudden, it's been one or two points one way or the other ever since the fourth quarter started. But this is what both teams have been playing all year. I don't think they, they have the uh, uh, offensive power. Neither one to really score high. So this is what their games have been all year, both teams. They give it up defense. They give you 110 uh, percent all the time. And it's great to watch. It's a great, great game to call. Woods has the ball high on the right side. I, I would, an instruction yeah. from Coach. Brian O'Connell. They'll look for an isolation for Woods sooner or later. You don't mistake that he can get somebody the ball. He's doubled. Gets rid of it to Rob Mitchell, who gets it right back to him. He gets doubled out high. He's drawing two guys wherever he goes on the floor. Ooh, a little ticky-tack foul right there. But nonetheless, Josh Scott will be whistled for his third personal. Boy, now you, now you can't tell me the way that that's... The way this game's been played all night, that he's going to call a foul this high out on the, on the court. Again, it's one of those things he's saying, hey, if you do it in front of me that way, I'm going to call it. But that puts him in a two-shot penalty now. They get two shots every time a foul is committed by Mason. Kings gets two shots. That takes a lot of the pressure off, trust me, folks. It's not the one-on-one. -one. Again, whatever happens here with Mason, they made or miss you. Stay in your offense. You've got plenty of time to work. Uh, you don't have to come down and shoot a three or anything like that. Stay within your offense. One for two. Good rebound. Strong Weaver rebound. Him, yeah, gets up high for that one. Spots up for the three-pointer. And two points on, on the line. Good call by the official. So Nutley, just as we say, sit, settle down and run the offense, he fires up a, a long two-pointer to tie this one up at 44. He had an open look. That had a nice break on that. Now, now you're on the road. This is where coaches all have their own, own philosophy. You hold it, what do you do? You don't want to go don't want to get Mason last shot with a tie game at their own court. McClung doing a nice job dribbling around out top. It looks like Kings might be content to run this sucker down and then call a timeout and run a set play. I always believe you just run it out. You don't even call the timeout. The coach looks like he might be calling a timeout. Hey, the defense doesn't know what they're doing. You know what you do have the ball in your hands. I like the advantage they're offense They're trying to get here. a five-second call. As I like the advantage offense. Being... There's the timeout, though. 12.1 seconds. I think Rada Bush looks like he's winning out there dribbling circles around out top. They're asking a full timeout. Full timeout. Now, now here's where you, you were talking earlier. I, I think it was a good play for them to do would be get a uh, get Nick Woods the ball up top and, and maybe have a uh, uh, Jason or probably Rob Mitchell a pick and roll action up top. Started with about seven seconds left. Because if anything else, you got Nick Woods rolling off about 15 footer. Nobody's going to be able to block a shot. They double team. He can he can bounce the ball into Mitchell. You might see something like that. You know Nick Woods is going to be involved somehow. So, so now Mason has to decide: you go double the ball, you play straight up man to man. This is what the coaches uh, they wish got paid the big bucks for, and uh, uh, they have to make some decisions. Both of them now. 
Woods has 13 points. The, the man with the hot hand, actually, for Kings here in the second half has been Matt Burge. He's had six points, but they've all been here in the, in the second half and, and some pretty big buckets. As, as Radebush himself has, uh, let's see. Uh, so again, they've done a good job on uh, Nick eight, all night. Seven. That's about seven below his average. But again, you know, the senior wants it. He probably wanted the coach, says, whatever it is, I, I want the ball. And they'll be inbounded, inbounding the ball right in front of us, as we said. Look for something, a screen, a pick something to get Nick Woods free. Burge having a little trouble getting the ball in. Tipped away. Oh, and they'll retain possession. Good hustling defense over there by Josh Scott. Almost. He did get it out. But again, that was close to a five-second call. We, we got coaches everywhere in front of us, flying in front of us. We're saying, watch out. This officials are not going to call a whole lot. Burge, now Woods trying to come back and get the double. basketball. They'll probably get a double. They'll probably double him and get the ball out of his hand. Come up, double him. A lot of pressure coming up the court. Gets it over to Burge in the corner. Back to Woods. Less than a second. The shot is up. It's off the rim and no good. I tell you what, you know Woods had to do that. But again, though, Kings has to go to the sideline. Somebody has to get an open area. Basically, the great job of pushing him around the court with three different players. And again, you get a shot at the end of the quarter, and it's not. But again, that's the bad thing about that. The good thing about for Kings is they got the last shot. Okay, they go, the worst that can happen, they go into overtime. Now they're in overtime on the road. They got to be happy with that. Mason's got to be with that. happy with the way they play defense at the end of the game there. Unbelievable. I didn't even think he had a fair. It is back to the basket with two seconds left on the clock. And he turned around and managed. The good it shooters was, always do that. Managed to even hit the iron. It was closer than you think. And the, the thing was interesting about it. As we're sitting here, we got coaches standing in front of them. I'm trying to stand up to see what the ball is going. Everybody's jumping up and down. It, we didn't show it on cable early on, but King and Mason game are always this way. The freshman went to double overtime. Uh, the JV was a close game, so we're going to overtime. Uh, and again, it's going to come down. I don't know if anybody's real serious. Uh, Matt Tudor has four for uh, Mason, but King should be in pretty good shape. McClung has four. McClung has four, but everybody else is three, so they're in good shape on that. But now we come down, who has more legs? Who has, who, who's in better condition might come down to the team winning this. Well, we've got four minutes, half a quarter to play here in the in the in this first opening we'll just leave it at that the, the first potential overtime period that we have tonight looks like woods will be jumping center against tudor possession will go to the comets tudor will take it high woods guarding him down low sutton hard off the glass tip in off and off the front of the rim looked like neater helmet went up for the shot and was fouled from behind he was, he was saying he's shooting the ball to the tip. They're saying no, but it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Here's a nice move, though. Andy, watch him fades on this a little bit. See, double clutches. You want to take it up strongly, uh, have the height of Andy. Watch your shot, he watch your shot. Most likely, with the official the taunt, they would have called a, a, a foul. And that's what the Coach Richards was telling Andy. Take it up strong. Josh, banging the board. That's what he does better than, that's what he does better than anybody on the team. He averages about six rebounds a game. That leads to comments. Big free throws here, Niederhelm and misses. Mitchell comes down with the big board there for Kings, just gives it up to Radebus, and he'll bring it across the midcourt line. Defense has got to keep up their intensity on both sides. They look like they're both feeling each other out here early. The intensity is not there on either side. Here's a double on Nick Woods again. Woods very patient with the basketball, gives up to Radebus. They want to force a baseline, good pressure. Kings is doing a great job, though. Take what they give you. There's a nice move. Push will drive, dishes nice. off inside. Mitchell. Shot up too hard. Mitchell loses the handle. And that's going to be off Niederhelman's hand. It looked like he had a dribble on it, but it was on the line and out of bounds. Rob works hard, but I, I, I'm telling you, he's missed six layups, and that was a great pass in there. If he knocks those down, I, I don't think we're near to overtime. Now but, he's easily missed three or four for sure. Good defense. Uh-oh, he picks it up. Got trouble over on the far side. Radebush good, does a very fine job. Always coming back, he manages to help out a lot. Uh-oh. Loses that one, however. Tudor will take it up. the lane, gives it up. Oh, that's a foul. See, because intentional. And that's what they're going to call the crossing of the arms. Intentional foul. Somebody better get Rob back. He's talking to the official afterward. That might have been one of those old football uh, wars, both football players. So what this what this does is Matt Tudor gets out and run for a big job. center. He can run, but watch the bounce pass. 
leaves Josh, goes up strong, let's see what he's doing. See, if he didn't come down to grab the arm, if he, if he just grabbed one arm, but they're, they're saying he pulled him down. You know, there, it's been a physical game. That's, that's a call on the official. Josh gets two shots. The key on this one, he gets two shots and the ball out of bounds. Josh is going to shoot 35% from the foul line for the year. We'll see if he can knock him down. Oh! Well, we couldn't get any more exciting than that, folks. Unbelievable. This place is absolutely rocking here. What a frenzy here at Mason High School. Nito Helman has put him up one with 249. He, oh, that was bottom of the net. That was still. Oh, the students are going nuts. Heck of an exciting basketball game. What an atmosphere here. So what you have to do now, you, you can't uh, lay down there. No, King, you're going down two. You got right there, out of bounds. You can't have oh! that. Good assist for Andy Suffin. Nutley taking us strong to the hole. Four point lead now. This gets it over. This is a two possession game now. That They're looking for Nick very Woods. Patient out top. Mason's defense is starting to pick it even up more, if you can believe that. First, McClung from the top. No good. Oh. Big rebound comes down by Nutley. He's double teamed. Jump Another ball jump. Situation. Oh, no foul. Wow. Woods is going to pick up his second foul. And I think the reason he called that. He's calling, he's, he's me right in front of me. He's saying he got him with the body, but I. The clock had a good look. Good, good luck. Clean. Watch Tudor and Mitchell get after each other. That's a great box out. Takes him out of bounds. See what happens on this. John takes it to the corner. And spins back. I, 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 what they've been calling all night, I think, I, I think that's a jump ball. But, you know, we're sitting over here. It's easy. We don't have the whistle in our mouth. Nutley gets that one to roll in. Puts him up five. Big free throw. This is what we say it comes down to. Mason's hitting them now in Makes overtime. Makes this one. They'll get into that full court pressure Big. again. Kings still, they don't want to use their timeout yet. No pressure. Nick. They're going to pick them up just at the half court line. Well, what they're doing, look for John Nutley's playing in the middle lane for Nick Woods. And they're double wherever he goes. He, they won't let him spin back just like that. And Woods and draws one. the contact. Shot no good. But again, though, he's working so hard to get the shot off. Uh, Mason's done a fabulous job on Nick Wood tonight. Nieder Hellman gets whistled for number four. That was a shooting foul. Anyhow, both of them the double bonus. Possession error is going to Kings. That's in their favor. So Nick has to come up there and knock a couple down and to take the uh, get it down to four points if possible. Shot. Nick's grabbing his cap. I wonder if he's cramping up as much as he's played. He's got six points from the line. He's Two three-pointers and one bucket from the court. He's limping. He is limping on it. I wonder if he's cramping up. That's why I said I didn't know if that rest he got was enough. Is it going to be? Whistle, that's going to be number three. We got, yeah, 206 remaining. We still have that four point differential, 50 to 46, Mason on top, and that's going to send Scott to the line. It looks like it might be a parade of free throws down, down the road. Scott, Mason's got to knock him down. You're in the lead. If you keep on knocking him down, that gets frustrating if the team comes from behind. They know they have to make a basket or free throws to match up. Five-point five game. And they, they're hitting the clutch free throw. Yeah, we were knocking them. I was. And coaches are. They're shooting 51% uh, for the year, 55%. But overtime, I, uh, they've hardly missed. I, I agree with the pressure, but I don't agree with the reaching in right now. they got to be looking for Woods. They're going to down low. Reverse layup. Blocked underneath. Excellent job by Tudor. Walk. And that's a good call. That's a good call. He was on the floor and he, and he rolled around a little bit, trying to settle him down. A little upset as Josh Scott. Here's a replay on this. Good Matt, block. Matt Tudor. Yeah, so he didn't get the body, just went on arms. See, Josh has got to look right away. Step through and he tried to step. No, that's. They haven't called that all night. There's a good defensive pressure, though. Down six. Now, King's going to have to uh, pick up the pressure here. 
And you don't want to foul Andy. Sutton gets it over. To Scott. Back to Sutton. To Tudor. Back to Niederhelman out top. And, and, and fouled by Rob Mitchell. That'll be his third foul. Yeah, this, this is the old pressure. Back when we were playing, you always had the one-on-one. -on -one. I kind of wish they'd bring that back, to be quite honest with you. They got the two-shot foul that takes a lot of pressure off the kids. And right. Knowing he's got two walking up there. And his first attempt is no good. Good foul by King. Jenner. If he misses just one of them, that's a, that's a good foul. And you know they're going to keep on going after him then if he keeps missing. There's a Oh, oh good tip by Matt Tudor. Keeps it alive. He's swinging open. Got it wide open. Nutley does a very nice job of pulling that back down. They're going to spread Bunch the floor. Time. Good job. See, they went, they're they yelling when he, when he touched it. When, when uh, Josh touched the ball, the Kings coach was yelling, foul, foul, foul. Now Matt's got to come up and knock him down. Matt for the year is only 43%. So Josh and Matt are He's out. the weaker free throw shooting. I shoot believe that's it. That one was on Kevin McClug. I was waiting for the officials to, to say something. He's found out tonight's contest. He had four points on the night. Kevin battled hard out there, though. He, he, uh, he, he played, a played a good game. First attempt. Slithers its way in. Tudor, that's only his third point tonight. Matt got in foul trouble early. Yes, that, that hurt him, but I tell you, he's had a couple big blocks down the stretch and the free throws. Ooh, in and out. Woods with the rebound. Up seven, seven points. They're still going to double Nick. It's frustrating. He, you can tell he's just, it's just frustrating. Nice Good pass. Good step through. Burge, hot hand in the second half. Eight points. Might have to call timeout. There's the timeout. Good job by Matt. There's some bang and a push, and Andy Stephens going off. He just got jacked in the jaw. Well, we're under a minute. We got 56.8 seconds remaining. 53-48 is the score. Five-point differential. So, so what you're trying to do, Kings has to decide on this, Dave. Uh, so the coaches have to decide if you want to foul right away or if you try to get a trap, don't foul until they get out of the trap. I, I don't know if you could do that. Though. You're five points down, and, and they're going to be content, obviously, just to shovel the ball around the top. you got to foul somebody. And you, you, you obviously you foul anybody but Sutton. Right. Put anybody on the line besides him. I mean, N Niederhelman has struggled. Um, Tudor has struggled. I mean, they're, not, they're shooting their 50 or 55%. They're not, they're not doing a real good job, but don't, don't hit the pure shooter. Don't and that's obviously who Mason's going to try to get the ball to right away. Exactly. You can't fall asleep, though. Yeah. As Kings, you can't fall asleep, because they might want to try to hit one long on this one. But I'd imagine Andy Suffin would be the person to try to get the ball into. What well, they'll probably do is pick up here. They'll probably pick up for Josh Scott and roll back to the ball. There he is. He'll pick and roll back to Tudor the ball. Tudor will do the there inbounding. He Gets the ball to Sutton. They They're trying to double team him. Good he job. Manages. Yeah, good job. Got the ball across the timeline over to Scott. Oh. Finds Nutley, he'll pull up and oh, shoot a jumper. What's he doing that for? Coach I don't is know. not coach. Coach is, coach is not gonna be happy. So pull it out. It's one of those things you don't want to shoot unless it's a layup. Yeah. That gives him a chance. I mean he had an open look from 10 feet, but you don't take that. No, not up five. Not up five. They're gonna pack it back in and they're gonna play hard on Nick Woods. Right of push. Three. Gives it up to Zach Woods. Three-pointer, no good. Birch fights for the rebound. They're not going to call that. You got to get up and box Out of Bush. Down to two. Get it home. Get it in and go. Now, all of a sudden, it's a two-point game and a foul. Hey, he kind of caught a foul. But Kings likes that. Kings wants that. Let's see who they whistled that on. And that's going to be whistled against Rowder Bush, and I believe that's number four on him. But that three breaks it down to a two-point game. So here's what you have to do. Josh Scott makes two. He doesn't put it out of reach. Makes it a lot tougher. He only makes one. Right. They come down to run their offense, take a three, whatever they need. Oh, big first one knocked down there. But this might be, uh, for the Mason fan, it might be Josh Scott's best game of the year here tonight. Come up big on the defensive side, offensive side, rebounding. He's done a lot. 
That's big free throw. That's clutch. Quickly, Rappelish, yeah, brings it across the timeline. Takes still get a two. You still get a two. Whoa. Oh. He was juggling. He didn't have control. They ain't going to call that now. Nicole. There's Josh Scott again. And that's going to be a foul. No, a jump. A jump ball. Oh, talk about having a monkey on your back. Zach Woods was taking him for the ride. And they called that a jump ball. I've seen it all tonight. Josh is said he's going to go down for the takedown. King ball. I knew they weren't going to call any, anything close as foul, but when you said that, we see that. Inbounds oh. through the hands of Radebush. Fought for. They're not going to call anything They're now. They're not going to say anything. And now oh, they my. Woo! Call that. 3.8 seconds left. So here's what you Peter got. Peter Hellman's going to get whistled for number five, so he'll take a seat. They got to. Uh, he got, he got interesting now. He fouls out. I, again, he should get a standing ovation. They're giving him a round of applause. He played tremendous defense on Nick Wood. He, he came in averaging 20. I think he's at about, about 15, 16 now. But those are, that's an overtime, and those are tough points. He played well defensively. Now, you got Rob Mitchell at the line for King down four points. Here's the decision. You got to try to make the two and get a quick foul. There's only 3.8 seconds. Are you trying to make one and, and yeah. miss the other one? Or, yeah. You know, it's a coach's call. I try to make them. If you can make them, make them. See what can happen out of bounds. You get anything out of bounds. And that's what they're discussing right in front of us right now. As he grabs the clipboard, Coach Brian O'Connell does. Big free throw. First attempt is good by Rob Mitchell. Give him credit. It's tough to go up there and knock it. And they're going to go ahead after that made. Come over here and talk about it. The coaches are huddling up. The players are sitting down to get a drink of water. Real curious, like you see, which way you're going to go about it. I mean, it's, you don't want to say it's 6 1 half dozen the other, but I mean, uh, you hit the front of the rim, you take the chance that you don't even get possession, then you have to make the foul. Why not go ahead yeah. and get the point, or at least the attempt at the point, and then and then worry about call, you know, giving the foul? Yeah. Because the other thing is, too, I don't know if they have any more time out. What Mason could do is let him get the thing not put in a limp and stay away from the ball, the clock, the clock runs out. So, again, I think what he's probably doing is giving the option, if we make it, here's what you do. If you miss it, here's what we do. So it's a good time out to let the players know what the situation is. I'll tell you what, fans are everywhere. The well, student section had, on either end hasn't sat down since this second half. Got, you know, we were about halfway through that third quarter. That's good to see up here in Mason. Being up here in Mason, we love this brand new arena. They're going to have Division II girls here later on in the year. This hole is 3,300 people. And it's tough to fill it up. There's a lot of people. There's a good crowd here tonight supporting the Comets. And Kings, Kings brought a lot of fans, too. It'll be hard. Oh, no good. That's going to be Fought it. For. They're going to they're going to try it up, and there's 1.2 seconds. No. I thought they were going to go foul. They're they call them. another tie up. I should have said tie up. Mason retains possession. They're up John three. Nut John Nutley's in shock. He's saying, "Do I have any ears left?" Hey, oh, unbelievable. Hey, I just throw the ball down the court. They got him. Nope. You don't want to foul here. There it is. There it is. I don't know if they'll give him credit uh, that the scoreboard says the referees made a beeline. We're going to go ahead and give him credit. Swanson with another two-point bucket that gives him six on the night. Folks, we're going to cut away, get ourselves regrouped here, get some final thoughts and uh, stuff together. It's, uh, Mike's going to head over and do a little post-game chat with head coach Greg Richards and one of the players. We'll step aside for a minute. We'll be right back here on the ICRC, home of the Friday night basketball game.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Mason High School. We're our final score head. Mason coming out on top by a final of 57-52 over the visiting Knights of Kings. Uh, out there at uh, center court uh, with our post-game interview is our own Mike Crowdy, along with the head coach of the Mason Comets and Greg Richards, as well as Josh Niederhelman. Mike, what do you got for us? Welcome back to Mason High School here with this is Mike Crowdy, along with head coach Greg Richards of the Mason Comets. And Greg, you, another typical Kings Mason game, uh, overtime game, hard fought game, and you got to be happy with the victory today. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, no matter what the records are, no matter what, you know, anything is, you know, it's a Mason Kings. It's a rivalry that, you know, is going to stay for a long time. You know, it's it's going to come down to the wire, and that's the way they've been lately. So we, we were fortunate to knock down 9 of 13 in, in, the, in the overtime and, and get some free throws to go down. And, and I tell you what, defensively, I think we did a tremendous job. Yeah, that's where we were commenting earlier about the fourth quarter and the overtime. You've been struggling from the free throw line. I know Josh and a couple other Josh Scott played tremendous for you tonight. I think I liked about it watching all year. A couple of your other players uh, picked it up tonight, especially Josh Scott. Oh yeah. Well, you know, his last couple games, he's I think he's really started to get a little bit more offensive minded. He's he's another one of our stoppers, you know, Josh Scott with with maybe a point guard or something, and Josh with the bigger guys. And I think he was just concentrating on defense a little too much. And now he knows, you know, he can score and, and he stepped it up a little bit tonight. So it was good for us. All right. Along with uh, Coach Richards, Josh Niederhelm. And Josh, you had the task of guarding the, the star Nick Woods from Kings. And then and uh, what was your game plan going in to stop a Nick tonight? It's really tough to have a game plan to stop a player like Nick. I mean, I mean, him, Nick and I were real good friends, and, and uh, I, don't, I don't think you can stop him. You just have to really just try and just make sure he doesn't get the ball, and that's that's what we tried to do tonight. All right, this is from uh, Mason High School. I'm gonna pass it back over to Dave Terry for Greg Richards and Josh Niederhelman. This is Mike Crotty. All right, Mike, thank you very much. Just to wrap things up here, folks, uh, high score for Kings tonight was Nick Woods, as Josh was just talking about. He had 15 points, um, albeit uh, eight of those were from the foul line. The high score for Mason was Andy Sutphin, who totaled out with 18 points. Take a quick tip of the hat to uh, our camera people tonight, Jim Mason, Larry Antke, John Massey. I'm um, on the graphics and out in the truck, Eric Johan, as well as Larry Arnett. And as always, a big tip of the hat to the main man that always puts this together for us is Tim Newman. Uh, folks, stay with us as next week we will be traveling to Marymount where Taylor will go in there and play the Marymount Warriors. And uh, once again, your final score here from Mason High School, the Comets on top of the Knights, 57-52. From Mason High School, this is David Terry saying so long, everybody. Can't be
believe that you don't want me I thought our love was here to stay Buzz me, buzz me, buzz me, baby I'll be waiting for your call Call it all. no one i ain't gonna lie to you when i say i'm yours forever every word i say is true won't you buzz me baby i'll be waiting for your call It's 21 minutes past 1 o'clock. If I find peace of mind in the sand and the sea, there's a hope in my heart that you'll soon be with me there's a prayer that i share with the sand and the sea and it cries come to me come to me as my eyes search the skies from the edge of the shore you are here in my arms for a moment or more then a tear rushes down to the sand and the sea and it cries come to me come to me but as long as there's sand as long as there's sea as long as there's time I'll long as there's heaven up above let the sand and the sea bring my love to me but as long as there's sand as long as there's sea as long as there's time I'll wait hope as long as there's heaven up above let the sand and the sea
sympathy, save your sympathy, that's all right with me. I was not inspired to drift along from day to day, till you came and took my man away. Remember my forgotten man, you put a rifle in his hand. Look at him today, remember my forgotten man, you had him cultivate the land, he walked behind a plow, the sweat fell from his brow, but look at him right now, and once he used to love me, I was happy then, he used to take care of me. Won't you bring him back again? Cause ever since the world began, a woman's got to have a man. Forgetting him, you see, means you're forgetting me. Like my forgotten man.
Friend, companion, advisor, entertainer, whenever you want us, we're here. WMKV at 89.3. I keep pretty much to myself, miss the Saturday dance. I had the crowd at the floor. Couldn't bear it without you. Don't get around much anymore. But I visit the club. Got as far as the door. Ask me about you Don't get around much anymore Oh, darling, I guess My mind's more ready But nevertheless 
Why stir up memories Been invited on days Might have gone but what for Awfully different without you Don't get around much anymore
great big beautiful dog Let me put my arms about you I could never live without you, oh You beautiful doll, you great big beautiful doll If you ever leave me, how my heart would ache Like to hug you, but I'm afraid you break Oh, 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 you beautiful doll a bumpin', baby, you really started something. First you would, then you wouldn't. Said you could, then you couldn't. Then you all, oh, oh. all. Mm. Oh, you beautiful doll. The time is 1.58.
This is Miriam Stefanik. It's the top of the hour on WMKV, Reading, Ohio, 89.3 FM, nationally recognized in 1997 with a Gabriel Certificate of Merit Award as Station of the Year, WMKV is proud to offer programming that touches the spirit of humankind with a value-centered vision. For a complete list of daily programming, dial the station's 24-hour listener hotline, 782-2727. 782-2727. Welcome to the world of the theater pipe organ. This is Ed Dooley inviting you to join me for the next hour as we listen to music featuring some of the world's most popular organists of the past and present, playing some of the world's finest theater pipe organs. who has not been featured on the program before. He is Dan Simmer, a youthful organist pianist. He was born in Newcastle, Pennsylvania, where he began his musical training by studying the string bass, and at age 13 became a serious keyboard student. Advanced study was arranged with organist Bill Thompson, and later with Richard Purvis. Dan's debut performance was on the Detroit Theater Club's four-manual 34-rank Wurlitzer installed in the Senate Theater in Detroit. And that is the instrument we will be hearing him perform on now. From his album, Magic Orchestral Sounds, here's Dan Semmer.
Ann Semmer at the console of the Senate Theater Wurlitzer with you, T for Two, Miami Beach Rumba, and Hawaii. You are listening to WMKV 89.3. From Detroit, we move to Wichita, Kansas, and the Century Two Civic Auditorium to hear the former New York Paramount Wurlitzer residing there. The artist needs no introduction. He's well-known recording and concert organist, Len Larson. He opens with a South Pacific medley.
from his compact disc album, Give My Regards to Broadway, Lynn Larson with a South Pacific medley, including Valley High, Younger Than Springtime, Wonderful Guy, Happy Talk, This Nearly Was Mine, and Some Enchanted Evening. Do you enjoy listening to the world of the theater pipe organ hosted by WLWT retiree Ed Dooley? Why not associate your name or your business with this very special program heard only on WMKV? Learn more about how you can support WMKV, America's first FM educational radio station in service to older adults. Contact the WMKV Business Office at 782-2427 for more information. That number is 782-2427. You're listening to the World of the Theater Pipe Organ on WMKV 89.3 on your FM dial, Reading, Ohio, the way radio was meant to be. We're pleased to bring you these programs of theater organ music. If you have a favorite organist or musical selection, please let us know, and we will try to feature them on a future program. The address is WMKV 11100 Springfield Pike, Cincinnati, Ohio 45246. From Kansas, we return to Detroit, Michigan, and the Fox Theater to hear more from talented young British organist Simon Gladhill. The organ is a four manual 36 rank Wurlitzer. Here's Simon with June Night on Marlow Reach.
That was June Night on Marlow Reach, Just One of Those Things, and A Nightingale Sang in Barclay Square, featuring Simon Gledhill at the console of the Fox Theater Wurlitzer in Detroit, Michigan. This is WMKV 89.3. If you enjoy theater organ music, you might be interested in joining the Ohio Valley chapter of the American Theater Organ Society. The purpose of ATOS is to promote the preservation and enjoyment of the theater pipe organ. The Ohio Valley chapter sponsors classic movies on most weekends at the Emory Theater in downtown Cincinnati, featuring the mighty Wurlitzer pipe organ before each movie and during intermission. If you would like more information, you may write to the Ohio Valley Chapter, ATOS, 1112 Walnut Street, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45210. For our final stop on today's journey through the world of the theater pipe organ, we travel to the Bird Theater in Richmond, Virginia, to hear Dick Liebert and the mighty Wurlitzer located there. From his album, Liebert Takes Broadway, Dick opens with Around the World.
Rick Liebert at Richmond's Bird Theater with Around the World, Embraceable You, I've Got You Under My Skin, and Green Sleeves. This is Ed Dooley inviting you to be with us at this same time next week when we again explore the world of the theater pipe organ. Thanks for listening. This is Nick Clooney on your Music and Memory Station, WMKV, Reading, Ohio, 89.3 FM.
shining. Oh, happy day. No more troubles and no skies of gray. Ever since you said those words to me. You said you loved me. I know it's true. My life's complete, dear, for now I have you. Oh, happy day. The Council on Aging of the Cincinnati Area Incorporated is proud to be a sponsor of WMKV 89.3 FM, the source of entertainment and information for older adults. The Council on Aging provides direct services and comprehensive information to older adults and their families on everything from nutrition to housing, medical transportation to home care. For information, 721-1025.
to say our love will stay until the cows come home and then the cows came home do you know why we used to say we'll love this way till hades freezes over and then it just froze over We had the future dancing a jig for us. Do you suppose our little dreams got too big for us? We used to say our love will stay forever and anon. And now forever's gone, darling. Do you? is 
dancing cheek to cheek. Oh, I love to go out fishing in a river or a creek. But I don't enjoy it half as much as dancing cheek to cheek. Dance with me. I want my arms about you.
on a bevy of high brown from down the levee, all Miss Kids putting on the ribs. Why, that's where each and every Lulu Bell goes every Thursday evening with her swell bow rubbing elbows. Come with me and we'll attend their jubilee and see them spend their last two bits putting on the ribs. This is Bill Nimmo, here to tell you about WMKV's Sunday evening lineup. First, there's Ed Dooley's World of the Theater Pipe Organ, beginning at 8 p.m. This one-hour program features the finest musical selections performed by the theater pipe organists from our area and around the world. At 9 o'clock, stay tuned to hear the very best in four-part barbershop harmony favorites, hosted by Larry Findlay. Both programs have local as well as international appeal. If you like nostalgia, you'll find it 24 hours a day, only on WMKV 89.3 FM, the way radio was meant to be.
WMKV 89.3, the way radio was meant to be. I was talking to the whippoorwill. He says you got a corny trill. I'm going to swing tonight. I was talking to the mockingbird. He says you are the worst he's heard. Bob White, I'm going to swing tonight. Even the owl tells me you're foul, singing those lullaby notes. Well, he's a bring down. He never could swing down. He ain't got my high notes. There's a lot of talk about you, Bob. Yeah. They're saying you're off the car. Why, that's heresy. I'll sue. Make it. Mm-hmm. Mr. B. Yeah, I go. Take it.